A model steamboat named Edith, part 33, completing the project. Well, as far as fitting all the components back into the hull, this is completing the project. I still have to float the boat in the bath, which is in the middle of my lawn, by the way. Then I would add sufficient ballast to the boat to make it float at the right level. For the ballast, I'm using some sheet lead that I will fold up into the required sizes and weight. In this episode, it's the final assembly of all the components in the boat, and it's really difficult to do. As I'm doing this, I'm quite nervous because I'm not sure it's all going to fit. I am fairly confident, though, that it will fit, but I have to follow a chronological sequence to make sure it all goes together properly. For instance, in the last episode, I showed the fitting of the radio box, and that works fine. But now I have to remove the radio box because the engine needs to be bolted in first. It's impossible to bolt the engine onto the bearers in the bottom of the boat with the radio box in place. The removal of the radio box and the fitting of the engine I just couldn't show. All you could see was my hand and arms in the boat. But now the engine is mounted in the bottom of the boat and the radio box is back in position. So it's time to wrestle with the condenser and just shoehorn it into position between the boiler and the engine. It's at times like this that I wish I was still a child instead of a 65-year-old keyboard player with massive hands like shovels. Small hands would definitely be an advantage doing this job. As you can see, it's really difficult to get into the spaces where I need to be. And for a lot of this clip, all you can see is my hands, so there's nothing I can do about that. These videos are not staged. I'm actually doing the job as you see it. In this clip, I'm fitting the exhaust pipe from the engine to the inlet to the condenser. And as you can clearly see, this is a very slow process. In a previous video, I discussed all the ME threads that I use. And this thread, by the way, is 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. And it's fitted with a suitable union cone to accept a quarter inch diameter pipe. For an engine of this size, with two 3 quarters of an inch bore cylinders, it's a good idea to use quarter inch pipe for the exhaust, because the idea of it is, you need to get the steam out of the cylinders as soon as it's been used. This video is running in real time, so you can see in real time just how long it takes to tighten a 3 8 by 32 nut onto a 3 8 by 32 thread. There isn't much room to swing the spanner. I suppose it's pretty much like a modern car that's been computer designed. When humans work on these cars, some of the small jobs are really fiddly. And yes, it really did take this long, but finally it's starting to tighten up. Oh, no it isn't, I'm just changing hands because my left hand was aching. Part 2 of tightening the union nut onto the engine that pipes the condenser to the engine's exhaust. I think it's time to speed up this clip. As I'm sat here editing this and voicing it over, there's a real danger of me slipping into a coma whilst doing this. But thankfully it doesn't last forever. On to the next part, this is slightly more interesting. Most of the parts are fitted into the boat. You can see the radio control box, the chimney extension and the piping fitted to the boiler, and even the water tank at the front. All that's left to do is make sure that the superstructure fits, and thankfully it does. This has been a much bigger job than I first thought it was going to be. I didn't expect the hull to be as badly damaged as it was, and it's taken quite a long time to get this boat to the state it's in at the moment. And as I fit the hatch cover, the boat's starting to look good. There are some accessories to fit to the superstructure and the deck, but for the moment, I want to take a look at this. Originally, this thing was soldered to the deck and it was very rusty and very badly painted. And as part of my sympathetic restoration, I decided to reuse this part to cover the radio control system. But as soon as I started to work on this part, I suddenly got trolled by keyboard warriors quite badly, telling me how bad the part looked and it was terrible. Thankfully, every comment comes through me, so I only let one or two through, because most of them were just pathetic. But I do agree, this part looks really horrible. But it's probably a good idea to comment once I've finished the job. The idea was to put plenty of green paint on this to stop it from rusting. And now it's time to paint around these vent things on the top with some black paint. This is how it was originally. As you're watching me do this, just look around the image that you're looking at, the deck, and part of the superstructure, because that's not brilliantly painted either. Remember, this is a very old metal boat made by soldering bits and pieces together to make the shape, and it's absolutely full of imperfections, but this is the charm of the model. Think about this. I'm capable of remaking this part, 
or refinishing it so you can see your face in it. But then it would look wrong and it wouldn't fit in with the paintwork on the rest of the boat. So trolls and keyboard warriors, please don't write in because I haven't finished it. At least wait until the end. What I'm doing here is wrapping the main steam piping in some very thick string. This is not to insulate the piping as such, it's to stop you burning your hand on the pipe. Although this boiler doesn't have a superheater, the steam coming from the boiler is quite hot. Plus, the short piece of pipe connects the displacement lubricator to the main steam tap on the boiler. And both the steam tap and the displacement lubricator need to be operated at some stage using fingers. It's not too bad for me because I work with steam engines and very hot boiler parts very frequently. So my hands are quite heat proof. I still feel the pain of course, but it's not too bad. And it's a good indication for future reference that I should not touch this part with my bare fingers. But if the pipe is wrapped in string as shown here, it doesn't get quite as hot. I suppose it's a health and safety issue really. I've made quite a few videos on the channel showing the process of pipe cladding in greater detail. So if you want some more information about doing this job, please watch some of my other videos. And if you want to watch the videos a bit earlier and get some free downloads and some other things that are not on here, please join Patreon. That's one pipe done, and now at high speed I'm doing the second pipe. This is the piece of pipe that connects the displacement lubricator to the regulator, which is fitted to the main steam line of the engine. This string is very hairy, so I'm removing some of the hairiness with my small blowtorch. This is not the sort of string I normally use, I use much more refined string. One needs to use a more refined string if one is making more refined models. This string on the pipe is hidden inside the hull, and it's better to make it functional and stop you burning your fingers than it to just look pretty. So once I removed the hairiness from the string using the blowtorch, I then painted the insulation on the pieces of pipe using some leftover brilliant white emulsion paint from when I painted the ceiling in my bedroom. You can buy this sort of paint from most DIY outlets and you can buy them in tester pot form, a small test pot to see what colour you want. Well the colour you need for this is brilliant white. This is a tin of clear matte varnish. And guess what this is for? It's to turn this shiny green thing on the deck, which now has black bits on it, into a green thing with black bits on the deck that is not shiny. In this clip, as you can see, it's not as shiny, but the paint hasn't fully dried. Later on, it should fit in much better than it did. I do appreciate that the colour is not identical to the colour around the edge of the boat, but it sort of fits in with the general paint standard of the rest of the boat. And there you have it. Edith is now ready for the water. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.